<clears throat> All right, so this is chapter 12, section 4, Box and Whisker Plots. One of my favorites. The learning objective is to make and interpret box and whisker plots and to find quartiles and percentiles. So quartiles are values that divide a data set into four equal parts. There's the median, or quartile 2. That separates the data into upper and lower halves. The first quartile is the median of the lower half of the data. The third quartile is the median of the upper half of the data. The interquartile range is the difference between the third and the first quartiles. Just note, um, for a set of data that has an odd number of values, don't include the median in either half when finding the first and the third quartiles. All right. <clears throat> so um, what I want you guys to write down from problem one is that step one is to arrange the data in an order from least to greatest. Step two is to find the minimum, maximum, and median. Step three is to find the first quartile and the third quartile. So we're going to apply these three steps to this problem here. Um, what are the minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum of each set of data? We are just going to look at this first step. So the minimum, so let's order these from least to greatest. So the least right here is 60, then it goes 65, and then it goes 75, three times, three, boom, boom, boom. Then it goes 85, three times. Boom, boom, boom. And it goes 95, 100, 105. Boom, boom, boom. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sets of data. So my, um, I am definitely going to have a mean. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 85 is my median and as you know this is quartile two um, our instructions say when you have an odd number of data you don't include the median in the quartile one and the quartile three calculations so I'm gonna find the median of this set of data to either side of my median and when I calculate that, that is my quartile 1. And when I calculate it here, this is my quartile 3. So the minimum is 60. The first quartile is 75. The median is 85. The third quartile is 95. And the maximum is a 105. Check and check. Okay, so box and whisker plots. A box and whisker plot is a graph that summarizes a set of data by displaying along a number line. It has three parts, a box and two whiskers. So how I roll it out is the out our box is comprised of our quartile one our quartile three and our median these values make our box and our whiskers are the values from quartile three to the max and from quartile one to the min the left whisker, whisker extends from the minimum to the first quartile. It represents 25% of the data. Mm 
The box extends from the first quartile to the third quartile and has a vertical line through the median. The length of the box represents the interquartile range and it contains 50% of the data. The right whisker extends from the third quartile to the maximum. It represents 25% of the data or a quarter. So let's see. <clears throat> if we can make a box and whisker plot. Which box and whisker plot represents the following monthly sales in millions of dollars of audio devices? 15, 4, 9, 16, 10, 16, 8, 14, 25, 34. So the first thing I'm going to do is order these from least to greatest. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, 14, I said 14 and wrote 15. Two 15s, sorry. Uh, one 15 and two 16s. A 25 and a 34. All right, so let's find the median. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sets of data. So my median is going to be in between 14 and 15. In this case, it'll be 14.5 is our median or Q2. And our uh, interquartile, so our quartile one will be determined from these sets of data and our quartile three will be the middle of these set of data. So in this case, middle number is nine, that's quartile one. And in this case, the middle number is 16 and that's quartile three. This is our min, this is our max, and we have all of our information, so now we need to make a box and whisker. So we need a straight line. We need um, at least four. Our, um, let's just, our inner quartile range is 16 minus nine, which is seven. Our range is 34 minus 4, which is 30. So if I go, um, I start here at 4 and put 15 items on here, 6, 8, 10, 32, 34. So I can go from 4 to 34 and counting by 2's. But I'm going to write down 4's on here so I don't have to write as much. Okay, so let's put our items on here. So I want a vertical line at each of our quartiles. So actually, let's move, so let's move this stuff up a little bit so I can put my box. So uh, quartile one is at nine, and that is right here. Quartile 2 is at 14.5, so here is 14 and 0.5 is right there. And quartile 3 is at 16. Let's make our little box. And our whisker goes from the quartile to the min. And then I'll have one to the max. Boop. 
All right, so let's write on here the important numbers. That's 4, this is 9, this is 14.5, this is 16, and this is 34. Yay! Now, let's go ahead and interpret these. So, use box scale with plots below. What do the interquartile ranges tell you about the average monthly rainfall for each city? So, we look at Miami and we look at New Orleans. Miami has anywhere from, I don't know, 2.4 to 7.3 inches of rain in its middle 50 percent. But if you look at New Orleans, look how small most of their rainfall happens between like 4.7 and 6 inches of rain. So the box for Miami is longer, so Miami has a greater interquartile range. This range means that the middle 50 percent of Miami's monthly rainfalls vary more widely than those of New Orleans. And then let's see if we can answer this number three. What did the medians tell you about the average monthly rainfall for Miami and New Orleans? The medians are here and here. It says that New Orleans has a higher average than Miami. So New Orleans is on average going to get more rain. So New Orleans. more average rain than Miami because the median is higher. All right, lastly but not least, we're going to talk about percentiles. <clears throat> percentiles separate data into 100 equal parts. Thank goodness, because I can deal with 100. The percentile rank of a data value is the percentage of data that are less than or equal to that value. So let's take a look at this problem. Of 25 test scores, 8 are less than or equal to 75. What is the percentile rank of a test score of 75? So step number one, write the ratio of the number of test scores less than or equal to 75 compared to the total number. So in this case, I have eight out of a total of 25. Rewrite the percent, a fraction as a percent, so that's just a calculator chug. Eight divided by 25 is 0.32, and then write it as a percent. So 32 percent. The percentile rank of 75 is 32, so the correct answer would be C. Of the 25 scores in problem 4, there are 15 scores. I hit the pen. Less than or equal to 85. What is the percentile rank of 85? So we go 15 divided by 25, so that's 60, that's 0.6 or 60 percent. So the percentile rank of 85 is 60. Is it possible to have a percentile rank of 0 and explain? So I at least have to have one person at one percent. So you can't have a percentile rank of zero.